Well, good morning and welcome to our Resurrection Sunday. Amen. I pray that y'all had a blessed week and I'm glad to have you back watching the video and then sharing with us God's word coming directly from us here at the Vineyard Church of God in sunny Central Florida. Today we're going to be, of course, focusing on coming alive at Easter because that's what happened on the Resurrection Sunday. He came alive and he was with us. Amen. So before we get into this, if it's your first time watching the videos, just give us a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell, and you'll be notified weekly of our sermons as they come out. Uh, with these sermons, they are free. Everything that you have, I ask that you please share, share God's word. It's free. Uh, you know, take it to a Bible study, you know, chew it up, you know, chew up God's word, get to meditating on his word and get more of that into your heart and into your life. And also, like, like I said before, share with those who, who you think need to hear the message to get a good word and be uplifted and have them some hope put in their life and joy. Amen. Let's go ahead and open up with a word of prayer this morning. Lord Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for all your sacrifices and what you've done for us. We thank you, Lord. You are the Lord of all. You are our Redeemer. We thank you. And we ask, Lord Jesus, that right now, this very minute, that you take away our sins away from us, that you create in us a clean heart and renew a right spirit within us, that we may get your word and hide it in our hearts and share it with those that you put in our past, Father God. We ask this in your mighty name that it be your word today and not mine that come from my lips. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. As we get going on this, let's start out with, okay, we're going to be hitting into Corinthians chapter 5, verse 15. Easter is about coming alive, okay? It's about, it's about reviving us, okay? And if there's one time during the year that everyone comes to church it is basically on Easter either that or the second in there in that line is Christmas that they come to a, a service so um, it's about coming alive though maybe that's why people come to an Easter service it's about the the resurrection of Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior but let's go ahead and go into uh, Corinthians uh, chapter 5 verse 15 or second, second Corinthians excuse me chapter 5 verse 15, verse 15 getting ahead of myself here and he died for all that those who live should live no longer for themselves but for him who died for them and rose again it was Jesus that paid that price for us and we need to die to man and come alive in Christ and that's when we accept Christ in our lives now there are there's three problems with a good life everybody lives a good life and we all wish that we could you know uh, you know, live that good, perfect life that uh, that that everyone wants to have the money to get a you know get the house that we want, the car that we want, to do the things that that we want to do. But there are three problems with the good life. Number one, people feel exhausted. Okay, when you've done all this and you keep going and going and going because the money's coming in and you're flowing and you have all these opportunities to go to these places and do these things, you know, you, you can have hobbies galore and everything, but there's a time when you get exhausted of that. You get, you, you get tired of it. Exhaustion leads to emptiness because what is there left to do when you've done it all? When you've exhausted everything out of you know your your uh, bucket list or you know whatever it is what else is there it leads to emptiness emotion uh, let's see emotionness leads to enslavement okay so you have that emptiness and the emptiness leads to the enslavedness because where else are you going to turn to find something to fill that void that empty hole that is now there Okay, how are we going to do this? What, what are we going to find? Well, here we have three promises of the God life. Okay, and this is where we find what we need is actually in the God life, living that life. So, number one, it's filled with meaning. In 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3, he says, 
Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Jesus had to die in order to give us life. Okay, so we have that opportunity now through Jesus Christ to come to the Father. And so we don't have to do all that stuff with the old law. We are made new in Christ once we accept him into our life. Once we become believers, then we follow him. Now, here's, here's the gospel in, in five simple statements. Okay, number one, you were made by God to have a relationship with him. Okay, that, that's almost a, a no-brainer when it comes to creation, when we realize that we are his children. Why are we here? What is our purpose? We were made by God to have that relationship with him. I don't know of any baby that's born that walks away from, from the parents, you know, walks away from mom and dad, okay, and doesn't seek a relationship with him. He's an innocent child who is you know going about what kind of relationship are we supposed to have we supposed to have relationships with the world okay a lot of times the world doesn't have the answer and we can see a lot of chaos in the world nowadays so God created us for a purpose and that's to come closer to him is to ask him whenever we need something you know to uh, you know if we need uplifted you know go to God if we have a you know a, a need for something you know it, as long as it benefits, you know, God's business, God's ministry, as long as it does that, he is going to give you whatever you need. So we were made to have that relationship with God. Okay, if we, if we can't talk to God, then who can we talk to? We have to be able to talk to God. Okay, number two, God knows and loves you and wants you to know and love him. He has always loved you from the very, very beginning. Before you were a twinkle in your mama's eye, he knew you and he knows you. Okay, From the very beginning to the very end and everything in between, he knows you and he loves you so much that he gave his only begotten son as a sacrifice for our sins, for us, so that we could have a closer walk with him and not be lost. Amen? So God knows and loves you and wants you to know and love him. So let's get to know God more. Let's get to know who that person of God is, who that person of Jesus is. The best way to do that, look at his word. Look at his word. Read it, meditate on it, love him. That is a commandment from Jesus to love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, your mind, your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. Those are the commandments that, that were given to us. So we got to know him and to love him. Number three, there's a problem with this, okay? There's a problem, and we have it all the time, okay? I've, I've heard people say this, that they are perfect, but guess what? God is perfect, and you're not, okay? That's a reality check. God is perfect, and you're not. You'll never obtain perfection, okay? You, you just got to live with it. You got to understand that God is perfect. If you are on the same level plane as God is in perfection, you know, then you would be like God, okay? And you're not. You're God's creation, okay? The only way you're going to hit that perfection is when we see God. When our last day is done here on earth and we go home to God, that's when we are given the perfect body we're given the perfection all right so number four is it's another thing that i tell people a lot when when they're asking about a bad situation something has come up um and and they don't know why you know or you know it's the devil coming after me or you know what what's happening what what did i do that that's wrong you know, and, and there's no way to get out of it. Well, guess what? God has a plan. And that's number four. God has a plan. He knows what you need from day one to day two, from every minute to every second, everything. He knows what you need. And there's where another relationship part of it comes in is because he is waiting for you 
to come to him to ask him about it okay let him enlighten you about his plan what he has for you in your life what part does he have okay what direction does he want you to go in what is the ministry that he wants you to work ask him go to God in prayer and ask him now number five God gives us a purpose and that's that purpose that we are missing when it comes to the first part of this with the, with the good life okay because we've already exhausted everything it leads to emptiness and what do you fill the emptiness with okay instead of fighting and being enslaved to the world and trying to find and find and find constantly something to fill the hole no god is the one that gives you the purpose you can have you know wealth you can go out into this world and, and you know, have your house and your car and do things and this and that but what God wants you to do is be a good steward with what he gives you. Are you doing stuff to support God's ministry and God's plan for your life? Are you moving forward on that and utilizing the resources that he gives us to do this? Okay, that's one thing that we need to look at is God's purpose. Are we taking care of his business? In Corinthians, uh, 2 Corinthians 5.15, we're going to look at this again. It says, and he died for all, that those who live should no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. Okay, that's going to come up a lot. That's our main focus right there. That's our name, our, our main verse that, that we're going to be looking at. So, in 2 Corinthians 8.9, though, we go down a little bit further. It says, for you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor. He had everything in heaven. He had everything, okay? Yet for your sakes he became poor, that you through his poverty might become rich. So what was Jesus doing when he came to, to this earth to live with us, to walk with us, talk with us, to get beat up on spit, talk down to... You know, everything that he did, even the devil attacking him, 40 days and 40 nights, temptations, okay? He was going through all this for a reason, for a purpose, for a plan. God loved this world so much. He loved everybody in it that he gave his son as a sacrifice for us. Amen? That's what we need to look at and really get in the minds of people, other people that are out there. Um, you know, the, the government has tried to tear down Christianity and turn our holy days in, into to farces. Uh, you know, even this year doing that, um, you know, if you haven't seen anything about it, read up on it. But this is a holy day for us. This is something that we as Christians, um, this is what we take seriously. This is our day to remember Jesus Christ not some political agenda, all right? But um, if you look at grace, if you, if you break grace down, we can break it down into five words at this. It says, God's riches at Christ's expense. It was God's riches, but it was paid for at Christ's expense, okay? It's filled with grace in Romans chapter 7, verse 6. He says, but now we have been delivered from the law, having died to what we were held by, so that we should serve in the newness of the spirit and not in the oldness of the letter. It's by God's grace that we are saved. By his grace. Amen. Jesus has set us free from these things, okay? He has sent us, he set us free from guilt, from the fear of death, from past hurts, expectations of others, worries, anxieties. There's a whole list that, that you can go by of what Jesus has set us free from. We don't have to have that guilt anymore. It's in the past. And what did Jesus say about the past? You know, the past is gone. It's yesterday. Yesterday is no more. And are we supposed to look back on yesterday and meditate on yesterday? No. He says, focus on today. He says, don't even worry about tomorrow. Yesterday's gone. Tomorrow's not here yet. 
focus on the day it is right now okay this is where God is and this is what God has planned for you today he'll take care of what is tomorrow all right so it's filled with God's grace um, the fear of death we have no fear of death in knowing that Christ lives in us if we have Christ in our life we have the Holy Spirit living with us we have no fear of death because we know where we're going we know where the end is and when God calls us home, where are we going to be and who are we going to see when we open up our eyes? In that twinkling of an eye, that very, you know, split second, we're going to close our eyes to this world and we're going to see God. So that is no fear, no fear of that death. No past hurts, that goes along with guilt. There's no past hurts. Expectations of others. Why should you have expectations of others? You know, I, I know we do. Bosses have expectations of their workers. You know, we have expectations of, of, you know, people when they're doing their jobs and things like that around for the ministries and that. We have expectations. But if we focus on just their expectations, where is that putting us? Okay, because we got to realize that God is way up here and his expectations of us are even higher. So we can have our little, small expectations of people, but don't forget that God holds a higher standard, okay? And we have to look up to that. Also, worry and anxiety. We shouldn't have to worry. There shouldn't be any worries about it because God is in control. God has the plan. He has the purpose for our lives. So don't worry, don't worry. Be full of joy. The Holy Spirit is in your life. He's in, he, he is the one that God speaks to and goes through you. Tells you the directions you need to go. He is the Holy Spirit of God. And that is where true joy comes from, is that Holy Spirit. So we should not have any worries or anxieties about you know, things that are really minuscule or things that aren't here yet. You know, things that haven't happened, we shouldn't worry about that. Don't worry about tomorrow. Worry about today, okay? Which we don't even have to worry about that because God's in control. Which leads us to what we call the crossroads of life, okay? Crossroads, the, the choices that we make um, in different things. We got one here. I can try to earn God's approval, okay? That, that's that question. Do I have to work? Do I have to always have to, you know, a job to do and, and win people into the kingdom of God? And when I win people, that's my working for it. And it adds as a mark in my book into heaven. And the more marks I get, the better the mansion in heaven that, that I get. Okay. Some people think that way. Well, I can try to earn God's approval good job or I can enjoy God's approval because I already know that he approves of my life and where he where he's got me going where I'm going that I'm following what his plan is and not my own okay doing his works not mine in his ministry not my ministry this is his by the way this everything this the the earth is his the lands the properties um, everything that I own, that you own, from, from birth, when you come into this world with nothing, to the time you leave with nothing, we are blessed in between with everything that God provides for us. Okay? So, you can either try to earn God's approval, or you can enjoy, or you can enjoy God's approval. Okay? Enjoy it. Enjoy it. In Hebrews chapter 7, verses 18 and 19, he says, For on the one hand, there is an annulling of the former commandment because of its weakness and unprofitableness. For the law made nothing perfect. On the other hand, there is the bringing in of a better hope through which we draw near to God, which is Christ Jesus. Okay, All the old laws are gone. We don't have to be subject to the old religious laws. Okay, we have the new that Jesus has passed down to us. Now, in uh, 
Timothy chapter 2, verse 6, it says, Who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time? Okay, that's 1 Timothy. Okay, and also it's, it's full of energy. It's full of energy. Um, for I have satisfied the weary soul and I have replenished every sorrowful soul in Jeremiah 31, 25. Um, also in Zechariah 4, 6, I know it's a lot of scripture, but you can always jump back on the video. See, that, that's where, you know, in, in the service time, I have to go real slow. Okay, and I know you don't want me to do that and just make up things. So, um, you know, you can always bounce back and forth on, on the tape or, you know, you know if you record it on you or the USB or whatever. You can always go back and share it with other people, like I said, and write it down. Meditate on God's Word because that's what it's here for. Um, so we're going to Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6, um, way back. It says, So he answered and said to me, This is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. That is the power. That is the spirit, okay? Good news. The same power that rose Jesus from the dead lives in us. The same power that resurrected Christ from the dead. It abides in us. Before Jesus, we didn't have uh, the Holy Spirit. When Jesus died, that's what we got. Okay, we got the Holy Spirit and God poured out that Holy Spirit among all. Okay, everybody. All right. Now, it's up to us to accept the Holy Spirit and bring it in. Okay, when the Holy Spirit lives inside of us, we have that same power. In, in Corinthians, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse six, 16, it says, Therefore, we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing. It's growing old, perishing. Yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. God's word renewing us that that holy power that is inside of us the power never fades what is inside never fades the Holy Spirit doesn't change Jesus never changes and God never changes okay they're all the same we may age and get old but it's what's inside keep it young keep it strong all right, in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 22, it also says, For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ all shall be made alive. Even though we are of flesh, the flesh will die. But we live on, we actually live in Christ. So when we pass from, from this earth, our living in Christ goes on in the new man. Okay. Also in John 10.10, 10, the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life. We're not talking about life here. It's all a new life and that they may have it more abundantly. Okay. And so we can have that life more abundantly. Jesus inside of us, working constantly, the Holy Spirit speaking you know, from God through us to other people that they get put in our paths. All right. That is what we need to look at. That's what we have to come closer to. That is that part, that special part about Easter. Amen. That is the, uh, the, the, the meaning. That is where we need to focus ourselves to come alive at Christmas. Um, I've got a few things here. This is called the ABCs of Easter. And then I'm going to close uh, in, in prayer. And I'm going to pray that you have a fantastic rest of the Resurrection Sunday, your Easter Sunday, uh, so all the kids can, can have fun and you can show God's love through you, okay, through your Holy Spirit. Show that love and that joy and that peace and patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. All the fruit that the Holy Spirit has to offer. Show that to the children and lift them up. Amen. But the ABCs of Easter is already, that's number one, already living in new life. You're already there. You're already living in new life that's inside you. 
You accepted Jesus into your heart and in your life. You got the Holy Spirit dwelling inside you. That's a new life. And we know that our life extends beyond this world. Amen. We got the B in believing and beginning this new life today. We got to believe and begin in our new life with Christ today. Christ died on the cross. He was resurrected from the dead. He showed everybody who he was and is to this day. The same Jesus, our Lord, our Savior. Amen. See, considering, considering what God wants to do in my life, in your life. Okay, we need to consider that. What God wants to do. What is his plan for us every single day? When we get up in the morning, it shouldn't be, oh man, not another day. It should be, God, what have you got planned for me today? What is this next adventure that I'm stepping out of bed and getting onto this floor for? Because every day walking with the Lord is an adventure. It's something new. And it's something that we need to have that happy, thankful attitude for. And that's going to draw us even closer to the Lord. Last but not least, decided. I don't need, I want God in my life. I don't have any needs. All I need is God here in my life. And that's it. I don't need for anything else. That's a want, okay? But it's not a need. God will meet your need, okay? There's not all the needs. There is just one thing to God, and that is the need. And he will meet the need as we pray to him, as we talk to him, as we walk closer to him, as we bring in his word into our lives. Amen. So today, as we celebrate Jesus' resurrection from the dead, it is new life. It is something that we celebrate. We are happy about it. We are joyful about it. And that we want other people to feel the same joy as we have knowing that we are saved. We're part of a bigger family that God loves us so much. He loves us so much that he sacrificed his only child for us. For us. And we were yet unworthy. Amen. Now that's a father. Father God, I thank you for this message you've given me today to share with those that are listening to the video, those that are coming in to watch the sermon. That Father God, I pray that your word enters their hearts and their minds, not just to keep to themselves, but to share with those that you put in their path. Those people that they meet every day at work, at the store, at the park, wherever it is that they go. And that Father God, I pray that you send them an uplifting word through the Holy Spirit that you guide them into the direction of coming closer to you and increasing your kingdom, Father God. Help us to plant the seed and watch it grow. We ask for your protection today as we head out into the missions field, as we drive on, on these, these roadways that are getting more dangerous every day, that Father God, we pray for your protection to be around, to be around us, our vehicles, our houses, our properties, our businesses, our churches, and every living Christian soul around this world. That you protect us from the fiery darts of the devil that come our way 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, nonstop. We know that wherever you are before us, Father God, nothing and no one can be against us. And we ask your blessings to be upon each and every one of us, financially, spiritually, physically, that, Father God, you bless us completely, our cups overflowing. Meet our need today, Father God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pray that you have a great, safe day. That you touch the lives of other people as you come in contact with them during the week. That you show them the love and the care that God has given you freely to share. Well, I'm going to see you next Sunday. Remember, hit the like button, the, the subscribe button, and the notification bell, and you'll be notified each week of our upcoming services. And we'll see you next Sunday.